In this video, we're going to look at an equivalent definition of Euler's number. Um, in the previous, in one of my previous videos, I defined Euler's number to be the limit of the following sequence, and I proved that this limit exists. And I also, uh, well, I didn't actually explain the motivation for why we're trying to work out this limit in the first place, but um, I will explain that in more detail on my blog, which um, I will provide a link to in the description. Um, essentially, it's to do with compounding interest and uh, compounding continuously. But what we want to do is we want to prove an equivalent definition of Euler's number. So assuming the, this definition of Euler's number, uh, we want to try and prove something else. And this video will probably be in two parts because I won't have enough time to actually prove everything in one video. Um, we want to prove that E is the unique real number such that the limit as H approaches um, 0 from the right hand side of e to the h minus 1 over h is equal to 1. Okay, and now this will also seem obscure at the moment, so I will outline the motivation for this. Um, it comes down to trying to differentiate exponential functions. So an exponential function looks like this f of x equals a to the power x, and a is some real number. And you know, trying to differentiate this from first principles, well, um, if we're trying to work out the derivative of f of x, then we need to take the limit as h approaches 0 of a to the power h minus 1, uh, whoops, I've jumped the gun, of a to the power x plus h minus a to the power x over h, and we need to show that this limit over here exists which is the same thing as showing that the limit as h approaches 0 from the right hand side uh, exists and also that limit as h approaches 0 from the right hand side of a to the x minus h minus a to the x over negative h exists. Now this is just the left hand derivative and this over here is just the right hand derivative Okay, so uh, all that is graphically is, is essentially what we're saying is if that's our function, okay, then this is a to the x plus h and this is a to the x, but alternate, and, and what we do is we calculate the slope of this line by taking this change and dividing by this difference, but alternatively what we could do is take some point here a to the x minus h, and then calculate this um, this negative change, so a to the x minus h minus a to the x, divi uh, divided by um, also, also uh, this this negative value negative h, and this the slopes over here should also tend to uh, the instantaneous slope, um, and the slopes over here should also tend to the instantaneous slope, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we need both. Ideally, if we want this limit over here to exist, over here, we need both of these limits uh, to be equal to each other, and they also need to both exist. So, um, what mathematician said was, wouldn't it be nice if, well, first of all, let me do some factoring. So let's factor out an a to the x term. Okay, so the a to the x term goes outside the limit. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some real number a so that this limit existed and was equal to 1? And we can do something similar over here. We can take out the a to the x term, and we're left with a to the negative h minus 1 over negative h. Doing some further rearranging, we get 1 over a to the h minus a to the h over a to the h over negative h, which is equal to 1 minus a to the h over negative h into 1 over a to the h, which is equal to a to the h minus 1 over uh, h 
into 1 over a to the h. Now, if the limit as h tends to 0 from the right-hand side of, of this over here existed, and was equal to 1, like I said over here, then we wouldn't have to worry about this term over here because, well, the limit as uh, a to the negative h, the limit of a to the negative h as h approaches 0 is simply 1, and that a to the x term is still outside. So if we could find a real number a so that this limit over here, the one I'm drawing arrows to, was equal to 1, then we would be, uh, we, we would be good. We'd be able to solve a lot of problems to do with differentiating exponential functions. And e turns out to be the unique real number so, so that that's true. So let's try and prove that. We want to try and prove that e is the unique real number such that this limit over here uh, tends uh, is equal to 1. Uh, before we do that though we want to I need to prove something um, before we actually get down to showing that e a is e is the unique real number such that this limit over here is equal to 1. Um, and the thing we have to prove is that the limit of this sequence, 1 plus 1 over n to the power n, is exactly the same as the limit of this expression over here. And you might think, well, of course they're the same. We can, we can just, uh, oh, and I just realized my n's look like h's, so I'm just going to rewrite that. Um, all right, so I've just rewritten it with my with a with a p instead of an n. So we want to first be able to prove this, and it'll seem obvious why we want to do this uh, later, or maybe in the next video. Um, so it, this also may seem kind of intuitive because as p tends to infinity, this term over here gets small, and this term over here gets large, and as h tends to positive uh, tends to zero from the right hand side, this term over here gets small, and this term over here gets large. So it seems like we can we could say something like well let um, y or rather let h just equal one over p and and we can do this but uh, we just I just want to justify it so let let's just quickly do that um, so what what we can do is well since this limit over here we've already proved before to be equal to e um, we let's use that result first so. For some natural number m, given p is greater than m, we can ensure that e minus uh, 1 plus 1 over p to the power p um, is, oh, sorry, just realized that's not what I should do. Uh, we can prove that 1 plus 1 over p plus 1 to the power p minus e is less than uh, epsilon and also 1 plus 1 over p uh, to the power of p plus 1 minus e is less than epsilon for some natural number m. Uh, okay, this may seem odd. Um, basically, this sequence, 1 over p plus 1 to the power p, uh, also just tends to e. Uh, the reason why is because, well, you could rewrite it like this, and 1 plus 1 over p plus 1 to the power of negative 1. And then this would tend to e as p gets large, and this would tend uh, to 1 as e gets large, and likewise for, for this uh, sequence over here. So you could choose some natural number so that both of these sequences are within epsilon of e. Okay. And for, for all p is greater than m. And now uh, we notice something. Given that h is less than uh, 1 over m, Right. Uh, we can all we know that h is actually bounded between uh, two natural numbers. So h, you know, although it's less than one over m, it's got to be between uh, something like one over n plus one. Whoops, n plus one and one over n, for instance. Okay. Um, you can always take. Uh, numbers of the form 1 over some natural number and bound h between uh, subsequent subsequent uh, rational numbers in the interval 0, 1. Okay, so this, this, this may not seem obvious at first, but 
basically, uh, I'll sketch the proof of why you can always do this. Uh, consider the following set, um, set of all natural numbers n, uh, such that, um, such that h is greater than, um, 1 over n. Okay. And if you take the least element of this set and play around with it, uh, you'll realize that uh, h has to be greater than 1 over uh, the least element of that set and less than 1 over the least element minus 1 uh, of that set. Okay, so that this is a sort of sketch of that. But So in essence, if h is less than 1 over n, then h has actually got to be trapped between two numbers like this, uh, which also means that h, well, 1 plus h, is less than 1 plus 1 over n is greater than 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 and also 1 plus h um, well to the power 1 over h is less than 1 plus 1 over n uh, well let's, let's let's see here h is less than uh, oh sorry h is uh, greater than n what am I doing? Sorry. H is greater or equal to 1 over n plus 1. So 1 over h is less than or equal to n plus 1, which means that we can put an n plus 1 over here. And this is greater or equal to 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 to the power n. Um, now, n actually has to be greater than m. Okay, because of the way we've defined n plus 1 to be the least element of that set I mentioned earlier. Uh, which means that this over here is uh, within an epsilon of E. Actually, I'll put an absolute value sign around both of these. Although I don't really need to. So this, this here is within an epsilon of E, and this here is within an epsilon of E. So 1 plus h to the power 1 over h minus E uh, is less than 1 plus 1 over n to the power n plus 1 uh, minus e, which is less than epsilon. And this over here, uh, 1 plus 1 over p plus 1 to the power p uh, minus e is uh, greater than negative epsilon. And so the difference between uh, this and e is bounded, you know, is less than epsilon. So we've proved uh, this result over here. I actually think that's all I'll have time for in this video. Um, in the next video, I'll show how this result can be used to prove that E is the unique real number so that this limit over here uh, is true. Thanks for watching.